peeps, and welcome to a brand new series. Yeah! One that I've been wanting to make for a very long time. Pharaoh, the original game I have continued to play throughout my life, beside Theme Hospital, which was another game that I played. And I wanted to play Theme Hospital on my channel, and I wanted to play Pharaoh on my channel. I did play Theme Hospital on my channel, and then while playing it, found out that Two Point Hospital was being made. And when I was going to start Pharaoh on my series, I found out that Pharaoh, a new era, was being created by a company called Triscoll Interactive. I'm actually a big fan of this company. They made a game uh, going back a number of years called Lethis, which I really enjoyed. And it is basically uh, Pharaoh or, or Caesar or Zeus or any of those sorts of games, but it had a steampunk theme and it was really cool and I really enjoyed it. So when I heard that Triscoll were making this, I knew they would make a really good job of it. And boy, have they. And we will progressively work through the entire game, except we won't be doing it in five minutes because it's quite a long game, really. <laughs> Let's get started. Let's see how they've changed things up. <gasps> because I remember these uh, these borders and banners and I used to love them. And everything was made of hieroglyphs, you know. I used to really enjoy that. Their new intro is wonderful. I, I really did enjoy that. But I do miss the original, if I'm going to be honest. Um, but here we go. We get to create our family. We need a family name. Our name, our dynasty, our dynasty, however you say it, that will uh, reign through the ages. We need a name. I don't want to go with Blah Light. I don't know. It doesn't really feel right for the game. <laughs> what about Lethis in homage <laughs> to Triscoll for doing just the best thing in the world ever? <laughs> Um, I quite like this one here, the blue and the gold. That's that's nice. I like I like this little icon here. We didn't we didn't used to have avatars with this, did we? No, like it. Nice little addition. Here we go. Oh, very neat. Okay, let's proceed, shall we? Oh, we've got mission select and load preview. Okay, well that's <laughs> we've got mission select. Challenge yourself on standalone missions or build the city of your dreams in sandbox. Oh. <gasps> This is new and sounds amazing. Ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. Oh. Okay, well, we're going to be doing campaign. Really, 4,000 years of Egyptian history. Yes, let's. Oh, it sounds so fun. <laughs> no, no, but it is. No, it is. It, it is fun. <laughs> Proceed. Oh, we've got the map. Look, it's all been redesigned. <gasps> Pre-dynastic period. Don't expect me to be able to weed things. Um, look at this. The date. Your family begins the pre-dynastic period leading a small band of nomads through their discovery of the arts of civilization. Your leadership helps to set Egypt on its course to eventual greatness. Uh, still glimpsed only dimly. <gasps> Okay, so this is our tutorial level. Let's get into it. A village is born. Small landscape, win conditions, have six meager shanties. Welcome to ancient Egypt, land of the pharaohs. Here you'll participate in the history of one of the greatest civilizations the world has ever seen. In an epic story that spans more than 15 centuries and two dozen generations. You must lead one family, generation by generation, from its earliest beginnings in Egyptian prehistory, through the dawn of civilization, to the establishment of a unique and powerful empire and beyond. Our story begins more than 5,000 years ago, along the banks of the Nile River in an area known as Nut. Here, a small confederacy of clans struggles to eke out an existence in the harsh environment. With you at its head, your family leads this small settlement. <gasps> we lead it! And then the music's all like, oh. <laughs> Okay, the mission is lost. If your debt rises uh, up to minus 5,000, I'm going to say doubloons, as always. Watch your treasury carefully. <gasps> uh, nubt, was that? Nubt, nubt, nubt. Mm. Okay, oh, oh, here we go. Humble beginnings. The first things the village will need are housing to provide settlers with a suitable place to live and a network of roads to allow its eventual inhabitants to find their way around easily and efficiently. Build areas of housing and you'll soon see people move into the village. 
Excellent. They have they have changed this. Oh, we do have the little icon. Do you remember that was the housing icon? Look at this. That was the housing icon. Housing. They they've done it a bit differently, haven't they? Because that was the whole button before, but they've sort of used an element of it. Oh, it was, oh look, and you can see look, we've got the little housing icon. Oh, they've got the cells. There we go. No road access. So we've got the roads here. Okay, so we can just click and drag all along here. Boom, the Kingdom Road. The path by which immigrants reach your city is known as the Kingdom Road. Migrants always need free passage from the Kingdom Road to the city's housing areas. If you isolate a neighborhood from this vital link to the outside world, its homes will simply disappear. <gasps> So the Kingdom Road being this one, see so it goes off the edge of the map and here we can see the people arriving. And then you could click on these and they would talk. I'm new here. I wonder what the city will offer to a person like me. So we've got people arriving. Oh, look at the animations. They look the same, but just really slick and modern now. Um, oh, oh. oh, we have an ostrich. Yeah, invisible to human eyes when they hide their heads in the sand. <laughs> Uh, I love all the voices. Do you remember? I love these festival crowds. Uh, I, I love this game. <laughs> I'm so excited. Anyway, watch immigrants arrive until your city grows to 200 inhabitants. We're almost there. And you can see the little individual houses upgraded into these little shanty things here. So we have these little singular huts. And then when four are uh, occupied by enough people they turn to these big ones look um to evolve their houses your inhabitants will need basic access to water some well placed wells will provide them with everything they need wells must be built on land with underlying groundwater as indicated by the presence of green grass growing and provide water within a two tile radius of themselves See, see, and you can see the difference. So these are the ones we have at the moment, but then when you put the water in, you start to see little pots and that, and trees sprouting. So it makes it just a little, little bit more green. Um, and if we click this one, this this is a small house. You can see it has five occupants, no extra room. Um, food empty, goods empty, luxury goods empty. Oh, I love all this. Right, okay, not visited by a tax collector, not paying tax. You'll note, I think, uh, a lot of modern games use a lot of processes from these old Sierra games. A game I really like, Foundation, <coughs> actually. Uh, I would say it has a lot of influence from these Sierra games. Um, so not visited by a tax collector, not paying tax. Residents report no crime, no fire, uh, cannot collapse. That's always nice. The inhabitants of this house are in excellent health. This is great. This house cannot evolve as it does not have access to even the most primitive water source. So you can see here we have this process. Then the larger one, when we've got these, these houses and they join together, 20 occupants. Uh, but again, because it is just a crude hut, right? These are all just crude huts. They can't progress until we give them water. Look, we've got a services button. Water. Yeah, so these used to be all sort of hieroglyphs. And they've sort of used an element of the hieroglyph to make the new buttons. So we're going to pop these in. They're quite cheap. They're just little simple wells. And immediately the houses start to upgrade. Okay. And we have sturdy hut. So... With the upgrade, we now have room for extra people to arrive, extra immigrants, and here they come, you see. So upgrading, giving them water, means we can have more people arrive. I'm new here. I'm new here. I wonder what the city will <laughs> offer to a person like me. My supplies sell like hotcakes. I'm going back to the bazaar for more. <laughs> do you remember? Do you remember? Or if you're new here, you'll think I'm mad. Um, hunting. So a growing population needs a reliable source of food and some means of storing and distributing it. The ostriches in this region can be hunted for game. You'll need hunting lodges for that. Uh, granaries then store game meat and other foods, while bazaars distribute the food to the village inhabitants. Ooh, so... Now, there's uh, lots of ways of getting food in the future um, because we have the Nile floods. They've 
reanimated this, haven't they? Look at that. These are the floodplains that you'll be able to farm on later. There's also fishing and stuff like that. But we have, you have to work with the resources you have on the map. And on this map, we have ostriches. So, here we have food and farming. Lovely. A hunting lodge uh, dispatches three hunters to gather meat. So, it says, wants it. We're going to pop that there. Oh, uh, it, oh it wants to. There we go. Right. Workforce access. So, oh, <laughs> we lost it. <laughs> Let's look at that again. Okay. As with most working structures, these buildings must be located within reach of housing and the city must have enough workers to staff them. Watch as the buildings spawn a walker to look for workers and how they turn animated once their walkers pass by occupied houses. You can click on a placed hunting lodge to get more information. So, uh, I think that's him there. Look, these are the walkers here. We'll, uh, we'll check them out in a minute. Um, so, what have we got here? Granaries. Uh, we'll get to granaries in just one moment, shall we? But look, let's have a look at the walker. I'm the most popular person in the city. A lot of people need jobs. Yeah, so 336 people need jobs. We've now created six because we have in the hunting lodge room for three uh, jobs, I believe it was. It does this oh, oh the encyclopedia oh, 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 and stuff about hunting lodges and things so they gather meat and hides um and i think it said there was three so we've employed six people and then they come out now those are some big drumsticks <laughs> so they come out and they hunt and you can see uh each bit is 100 so this has 200 meat this has 300 meat you can tell purely by um the, the graphics right i say that yeah 300 and 200 this becomes very useful seeing these units uh, clearly and easily um does he say something? ostriches are nearly invisible when they put their heads in the sand <laughs> brilliant so what do they do with all this food that they're collecting granaries so hunters will now set out in search of prey if successful they'll bring the carcasses back to the lodge i was gonna say ledge then to be butchered after which a cart pusher will deliver them to the nearest granary for storage that uh, we're going to build now uh, granaries are somewhat undesirable to live uh, to leave nearby to live i think there should be to live nearby but we'll need access <clears throat> to the workforce so it's important to place them carefully this is it because um this house here will not like living next door to this however it needs to be relatively close to the houses so that it can get workers but it also needs to be relatively close to these working places so that the goods can be carted right and you don't want it to take all day which is one of the things he's these guys say i have to go clear across the city with these goods it'll take all day <laughs> so yeah yeah you gotta you gotta these things have to be considered so here we've got stock and distribution stock and distribution granary can store every type of food chickpeas figs fish game meat grain lettuce meat and pomegranates look at all that so we're going to pop that here there it is um Right, did we read this one? Select the granary, build it far away enough. Right, bazaars and distribution. Here we go. While your hunters now deliver game meat to the granary, you still have no way to distribute it to your inhabitants. That's the job of the bazaar. The bazaar will send one of its workers to the granary to bring back the food and then will send its distributor roaming to the rows to deliver it to citizens. So we will see, did we see, it's a very short run there, but we do occasionally get to see the guy coming with the, I can't get him though. <laughs> but we do briefly, I keep getting the granary though. It's a shame. So the granary, and oh look, yes, so you can change what it accepts and all this sort of stuff. Uh, we can empty it out. Look at this, look at this. This is so good. This gets complicated later, but it's fine for the mid minute and we can see it filling up with meat. And again, you can see the different levels of meat. This is full, um, this one, and that's not full, now it's full. You see, and it just goes up and up and up. So we can see at the moment there's 1,600 in there. Um, so it'll be 32 when it's com 
absolutely full and complete and lovely. So, a bazaar. We need to distribute. We need shops, basically. Get food and goods from your granaries and storage yards to distribute them to nearby houses. We don't have storage yards yet, but... Oh. This has just popped up. When trying to play... We, we're not ready for this. Uh, so, let's pop in that. Okay. Distributors. Whether they distribute goods or services to houses, uh, roam the roads of your city for a time and then come back to their building. During their walk, when they reach a crossroad, they can take either direction. To avoid distributors getting lost where you don't want them to go, don't build a road network with too many intersections. This is also true for recruiters, so place your buildings accordingly. So you have to think about the things that you right to say. Um, so here's the bazaar. Oh, look at the bazaar! Look, so they're now waiting for their for the meat. So what happens is this lady comes out. The bazaar needs some items, and, and I'm, I'm going, going to get, get them. them. So she comes from the bazaar, and then she walks and look, and she has Maybe all these I children. Maybe I baskets now, <laughs> but one day I'll run, run the, bazaar. the bazaar. Yeah, so they come and they take a load of food from the granary. We can see she's taken a load. And then she delivers them to here. But then they've immediately been purchased. And we can see by the nearest houses. And you can see they've upgraded. Look at this. To mega shanties. Remember we needed six mega shanties. And they are now upgrading because they have this food. They now have a food source. And we can see that they look a little bit different. A little bit more upgraded to the ones with basic pots nearby. So as she keeps grabbing the food... I'm bringing it back here and it's uh, selling out quick because we've got a lot, of, a lot of hungry, a lot of hungry people here. So what else have we got going on? Oh yeah, we have this one. When trying to place a building near a road, you will see indicators with arrows. These green arrows show where the building will spawn its walkers and where it will take deliveries of goods. Ah, because yeah, that wasn't on the original game. The red arrow shows the point of return for distributors coming out of this building. Sometimes both points are on the same tile. The points might change when, you're, when you build new roads next to existing buildings. Right, okay. You can check them um, at any time by simply hovering your cursor on the structure to verify which we did do here with this one so with this thing there is roadblocks one of the tools at your disposal to control the walkers is the roadblocks roadblocks prevent distributors and recruiters from going through um so they yeah they you know keeps them on track um <clears throat> which can be very useful and it prevents distributors and recruiters but let other walkers with a set destination pass the uh, use of roadblocks wisely use roadblocks wisely and you'll be able to manage gigantic cities um i was never very good with roadblocks when i was little so that'll be interesting so it's saying here so this will help and actually i was going to say surely one up here so it stops them going on that main road right so fire and collapse risk to make sure noob uh, sustains the test of time you'll need to make sure that the structures in the village don't catch fire or collapse on themselves not all buildings are prone to risks but the best way to tell if one will need to be visited by either an architect from an architect post or a fire marshal from a firehouse is to click on it and open its panel info houses for example will catch fire if not attended to but will never collapse on themselves by themselves Things probably by themselves. I'm not sure. So, um, it says no fire risk here. But if we come over here, no, still no fire risk. Interesting. So, what have we got here? Services, safety, firehouse. You can now place freely. So, we're going to pop that. See, this is interesting because then he might start i don't know if he'd be blocked by that or not so we're just going to pop that there so then it instantly it's got a worker in what i can't see is how many people work here i find that weird i think it is just one for the firehouse but it would be nice to see oh 12 workers i was about to say because we could see that this wasn't fully so maybe this is the workers it is 12 okay it's like a meter 
Oh, six. Six workers. Okay, well, that showed me, didn't it? Look, there's one. I fear that some of these half-empty buildings could catch fire. I wish there were more workers. <laughs> Place a firehouse and an architect post. Uh, services. Architect post sends an architect roaming the streets to prevent buildings from collapse. We're going to put that next door. Look at that. There we go. Access to clean water. Now that they have food, villagers need access to clean water from a water supply, which is much preferred over wells water. Water supplies must be built on grassy areas and also need access to employees in nearby housing. Yeah, see these little ones, nobody needs to work them. They're just a, a water source in the ground that people can uh, access to. Whereas one of these water supplies does need workers and it, yeah, it is actually occupied. Once um, up and running, a water supply will dispatch a water carrier to deliver buckets of clean water, drinking water to all houses in its immediate vicinity. Very important indeed. Um, because the more you start to upgrade them, they start to want more things, you know. Um, uh, including things like education that which comes up later so we're gonna go services hygiene water supply we can place freely again so you can't place it say over here in the sand it does have to be in the green um, so we're going to just pop that uh, here fairly central there we go victory well done by filling your people's bellies with nourishing food and protecting their homes from fire and collapse, you have helped this fledgling civilization take its first step on the road of history. Mission was completed in 21 months. It took me quite a long time because I'm reading everything out loud and explaining things as we go. Um, culture rating, prosperity rating. We have a kingdom rating of 49. We ended up with 13 mega shanties. Look at that. And a population of 400 and 26 and we can keep governing or we can move on to the next mission i think uh, it would be great to move on and get deeper into the game i can see we moved on look so it's cut 100 years look at this 400 years later and we're setting up this place look the dawn of civilization average landscape wind condition one ordinary cottages <laughs> after many years and the passing of a generation your family has resettled in the area of Inis in upper egypt here a small band of local rulers is attempting to extend its influence over lower egypt and all lands along the river nile and to unite this realm under its own house with one supreme leader Establishing Finis as a thriving city like nothing ever seen before will prove the worthiness of the Thinite Confederacy and help them gain supremacy over Lower Egypt and the other factions vying for power. In time, this will mean providing the population with entertainment and building wonderful temples to worship the region's patron deity. To build a city this grand, will require a substantial supply of cash. You'll find rich deposits of gold ore in Thinis, and harvesting them should be your first priority. Right, here we go then. Start to lay down your housing and provide your people with fresh water and food the same way you did in Nubt. Uh, try to be relatively close uh, to those ore-bearing rocks in the northwest of the map. You're going to need to mine them. You can clear trees with the destroy button, but these won't grow back. In future missions, you'll have to make sure you won't need them before getting rid of them. Interesting, because I don't think you could destroy trees in the in, in the original game. So here we can see, this is where all the gold is. Look, there is absolutely masses of it. So we're going to have gold mines here, but we need to be careful because... The people are going to need to be near water sources, so we can't have be right out in the desert. We need to stick close to water. Okay. Um, we've got food supply here. Because um, I don't know if... I, I actually don't know on this level if we'll be... It doesn't look like we'll be using farming. It's on the other side for a start. So it probably is just hunting, keeping things simple, learning as we go. Um, but yeah, we need to be a little bit careful here. So, <clears throat> and also... 
this game is right over here. Isn't it? It is. So we might want to, because we're going to have to get a path through here. We're going to need hunting over here, mining over here. So the town here in the middle seems like quite a good idea. Um, and we're going to need a road. Ooh. Something a lack of these. So we'll... Okay. Let's get some houses down. Um... So, I might do that many. We can always up these. Um, I'm going to do that. So, we'll, we'll see them start to arrive. There they are. Now, uh, we are not going to bother with water. Um, as in wells. We're going to go straight to water supply. We are going to bother with water. Right. <laughs> Just... <laughs> <laughs> just not the well so we're gonna go straight for this um now we need food supplies now i think as well i'm going to build some more houses we're going to do the same again good now we need hunting lodges don't we i've got to get used to these new buttons all right so build housing and evolve it to reach at least 10 mega shanties so we're currently at sturdy but we'll get the food in the food will start happening here we go and then when the food when there's enough food in here because we've got the workers that five workers in here as soon as there's a decent amount of grub here she comes she wants that she's on it good shall we build another hunting lodge here it's this one right mm -hmm. there we go Oh, oh, that's new. This is our avatar. Oh, that's the options, right? Okay, <laughs> just sort of learning it all. Overlays. Ah, oh, all the good stuffs over here. <laughs> we'll get into it. Oh, nice. Oh, that's so good. It's so good. They're just watching it unfold and things happen and occur. So, here's Amiga Shanty. It's happening because it's they're getting their food. We should probably do fire. I've got a feeling these might be undesirable as well, but here they are. When we get to overlays and that, we'll be able to see this stuff. Can we? Still can't. Still, I'm still not collecting. Uh, able to click on our our guide transporting goods. Oh well. Uh, and you can see where it says about leather coming out. Leather would be stored in storage yards, which we haven't got to yet. Only food comes in the granary. Yeah. Yes. Good. How, how are we? we? We must be pretty close. One, two, three. What are these? So one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh no. It's not. Oh, here we go. Slow up, really. Because you can see she delivers. My supplies sold like hot <laughs> I'm going back to the bazaar for more. She's delivering food. You see that? So we've got this lady. These Br goods will make welcome additions to the bazaar. Bring in the food, and then the, this lady goes and delivers food. And when she walks past their house and delivers the food, that's when it upgrades. So it just upgraded. We got our tenth one, and it's it's told us to build the mines. So each structure you place costs uh, doubloons, not counting what you will spend to pay the workers' salaries. One way to make back that money is to mine gold. Uh, place at least two gold mines near veins of ore so you can start producing, uh, the, so you can start production of this precious metal. Uh, make sure they have access to the workforce and don't forget to protect them against collapse risk. Yet yeah, mines are really prone to collapse, by the way. Makes sense. Cool, that's a cool little icon there. Here we go. Uh, this looks new, but it might be the same icon. Uh, it needs to be placed near veins, of course. So you can see red, but then if we get here, boom. Right? Great, huh? 
Right. So we're going to be bringing this path down here. So we're going to shove that there. One, two. So we have our mines. And then we're going to produce... Now, we could do with putting a roadblock there. Right. So off they go. I'm the most popular person in the city. Because we need people, people need working jobs. at the mines. Gold is a special resource that is stored in the palace, a unique building that all uh, that also vaults the city's treasury. Uh, you can only build one palace, and it must be constructed on grassy areas. Each gold carrier reaching your palace will add 100 doubloons to the city funds. With this regular income, you should not have to worry about debt. Excellent, eh? So, so we can see we've got this uh, the food and water people uh, coming up here, which is, I don't know, we probably don't want that. Now, see, my concern is that if I put this here, the worker guys won't come through and if i put it down now do they i don't know will the workers still be i've never been very good with these roadblocks will these workers still people searching for work be able to i don't know anyway so they're now producing the gold and we, no they've one got... can accept <laughs> these goods that's okay <laughs> i can use the rest that's the thing is that i need to build this palace so where is the palace where is palace village palace right so this is where we live right this is where the lethis family live um uh where should we build it, it needs to be in green uh let's should we build it over here uh people can rob from this as well uh later in the game I doubt they can now, but later in the game they totally can. Oh yeah, the roads change. So when you have particularly prestigious buildings, the roads upgrade. And you can also put in plazas later and things like that. Have your minds deliver gold. Well, so it's here. They're not delivering... Uh, what have I done wrong? Have your minds deliver gold to your... I don't understand oh it needs workers uh oh can the worker the people searching for work can they get through this roadblock i really don't know we saw him go out on a walk have i built it too far all right so here, here he goes I'm again the most popular person in the city a lot of people need jobs it might be too far away to get employees or perhaps he can't get through this roadblock we're learning here will he cross it no right okay <laughs> remove your mistakes Right, okay, so something else we also uh, should be doing over here. I've got to get used to this. Right, architect's post. Right. Now, there used to be a way of checking how many people... Yeah, 56% are unemployed at the moment. That's not good. So now, he might actually be able to... We got... We managed to get people working here. Cannot burn. Maybe this time... Oh, there's an architect. Well, the city's fairly newly built, so people need work. I really hope. There's the guy delivering water. I like living here, but if I were running the town, I'd do some things differently. Tell me, what what would you do? Maybe not build the palace so far away from the village. Would you do that? Because it seems to me he can't. Oh, oh, we've got, he's done it, he's done it. So look, we've got these guards outside. Oh, I love how close we can zoom in. Krim. I said, didn't I? I think I start robbing it. Uh, with a supply of cash and reserves, however, comes the risk of theft. Constables from a police station can help reduce losses through theft, both by um, 
patrolling the streets to prevent crime and by subduing any criminals they encounter. The best way to prevent crime, uh, though, is to keep your population happy with adequate food, healthcare and jobs. Yes, it makes sense, doesn't it? So there we go. Um, and we know that we've got a lot of unemployed, so they're going to be a bit upset. Now, I found that with our police station curbs crim in the neighborhood <laughs> we're okay with crim uh so having one here i tend to find is quite good right um do you know what we might also put one here right um one it'll help bring down the unemployment rate and you'll know when this is full because the little flag will come up there's one there um overlays yes <laughs> um so it's you know more people in work but also um i think having a police station right by the treasury is just a good idea uh you can check your um houses by clicking on them to see if there is risk of crime uh, but sometimes you'll need to be able to see in one glance if there are any problems in the entire city and the city can get huge absolutely massive and when you start building pyramids and things it gets crazy uh, this is where overlays on the left bar will help you try the crime overlay first you'll need to be able to explore a few of them i i said it right this time just in case there's some of you out there thinking i don't know how to say the word um here we go everybody's it... friendly here ah! no one is reporting any crimes that's lovely um what was that name if I didn't enjoy the danger of police work, I'd quickly take one of the many available jobs. Oh. 33%. Look, we're on it. So, let's have a look at our overlays, shall we? Look. Risk overlay. Crim risk overlay. Ooh. More likely over here, where the hunters are, typically. Typical. But look. Malaria risk over disease, crime, collapse, fire, uh, desirability. Yeah, see, this is the thing, right? Is that this is not desirable stuff. And you can eventually put in gardens to try and... But yeah, no, uh, that's a bit of a problem. Education, was that? Water? There, but there is education. There's just so much, so much. Anyway, uh, oh, this is now stuck on there. <laughs> okay. Uh, Krim isn't the only challenge you will face. Health can cause problems and decimate your citizens. Physicians patrolling a neighborhood will protect its inhabitants from diseases. Providing your population with food and fresh water will also reduce the risk of disease. This is one of the reasons why I don't like to use wells. Other structures will help your citizens' health going forward. The apothecary. The apothecary will protect houses against malaria in cities with marshes nearby, for example. So this is good, right? So, yeah, we could see that d the desirability. There's, n there's nothing desirable about this place. Um, we've got risks, taxation. There's no taxes. Religion. There's no religion. Oh, the... Oh, um, health. <laughs> education entertainment oh I'm so excited zookeepers that is that new I don't remember zookeepers uh, but then again I never played the um, Cleopatra DLC maybe that was part of that DLC have they included all the Cleopatra stuff in this do you know I don't know so anyway maybe somebody can let me know place a physician to protect your citizens from disease oh religion entertainment so this would be services, I would have thought. A physician. Right. Quite, quite a big one, isn't it? Let's put that. There we go. The coughing sound. This physician's office is operational and the local community is healthy and fit. Excellent. Religion. An Egyptian city cannot truly flourish without suitable places of worship in the form of religious temples and shrines dedicated to one of five gods. The patron god of Thinis is Bast. Uh, the, to appease the god, build enough temples and shrines dedicated to each of them to serve your current population. So not only do you have different gods in that need uh, worshipping in different areas, but sometimes you need multiple uh, gods being worshipped um, and not worshipping worshipping them will cause a lot of problems yes <laughs> um so it's worth doing um also though to upgrade um housing 
they'll need access to these sorts of services. Uh, granting uh, residents access uh, to the worship of his god. In addition uh, to their religious effect, shrines and temples uh, uh, also provides a good amount of desirability for houses nearby. That's good as well. I forgot about that element of it. Shrines can be built one tile away from a road and still function properly. That is lovely. Um, that is blinking marvellous, isn't it? Let's pop that there. So, we now have religion. And improved bass mood can be built a tile away. Um, yes, there used to be. Oh, the festival square. So we've got a temple. So the, the temple's pretty, pretty spectacular, isn't it? Should we pop that there? And then we might put a little shrine just here. Just to try and block this off a little bit. Now if we come to our desirability. It's, um... It doesn't look like it's done much, but it has. This is this is not as dark red as it once was. It's not, I promise. I promise. Build a temple and two shrines. So let's build another shrine at the opposite end. Here. There we go. <gasps> Festivals! Right, both patron gods and local de deities uh, can become hostile if not shown the respect due uh, their positions. Uh, first, you need to make sure you have enough temples and shrines for your current population. Patron gods will require twice the amount. Uh, festivals are always... Uh, festivals are another way to appease the gods. Build a festival square in the city to unlock the possibility of holding festivals. We love holding festivals. It's the best. Um, so what we'll do, we'll, we'll, we'll put the, um, usually I like to put the festival square in front of this, but I've built this so far away. So you, you need quite a large crossroad like this before you can build this thing. And it goes on the crossroads like that. Oh, it looks so good. They've, they've, because all these buildings look the same, right? They've just improved the graphics. Uh, consult the overseer of the temples to determine the status of each of the gods in any particular city and whether the gods are sufficiently appeased. Uh, lightning bolts indicate that the god is feeling hostile towards your city um, while a blue mystic symbol indicates that the god is feeling benevolent towards your city. Lovely. Uh, the more you see of either the more likely your city is to feel the god's presence for better or worse. There are different overseers uh, available on the left bar to help you govern your city. Check them from time to time. They should be able to answer most of your questions. Is, is this new? No, I think this was always here, wasn't it? So, oh, there's some bird sounds that I can hear in the background. I swear they're using um, wow as well. Uh, over the years when I've played games, I have heard sounds from Pharaoh in even movies and television, and I get really excited. Uh, <laughs> so, Bass is pretty apathetic. I, I don't give a toss. Don't give a toss, do I? Uh, there used to be a thing that used to tell you about the gods. Um, in fact, if I remember correctly, Bast was um, the god of homes and goods and stuff like that, making sure that your people were, yeah... Um, it was important to have their homes looked after. I, I'm sure that was best. Citizens grumble at the lack of festivals held in your city. So let's look at holding a festival, shall we? Look, 370 months since last festival. Uh, people talk wistfully of the good old days when festivals used to relive the um, monotony. Uh, when you instruct your overseer of the temples to throw a festival in honour of one of your gods, citizens gather here to participate. They do as well. These can be expensive though. So you can, if you've got multiple gods to honour, you, you need to pick one. And then look, you can do a common festival. We could do a lavish festival. Or we could do a grand festival, which we can afford, but we don't have the beer. This is beer. We don't have the beer. And at the moment we can't import beer and we can't produce beer. So we're going to go for a lavish festival. Uh, for Bast, here we go. Uh, order a festival. Now it takes a little time for them to prepare the festival so it'll be ready in June and then we shall have that preparing for festival and then they just come and they gather and everything and it's amazing. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And look at look at these. We've upgraded to Rough Cottage. So 19 occupants, room for 33 more because they've got food and they have um, the health and religious access and 
they've got oh so this person they're still in the mega shanty they're still okay these people are pretty annoyed but common shanty okay entertainment as your city becomes more advanced some citizens can enjoy leisure time activities such as taking in a little entertainment a wide assortment of entertainment is one of the hallmarks of a truly cultured city but currently you can only provide entertainment in the form of jugglers the juggler needs a venue in which to perform the smallest of which is called a booth. Build a booth at a corner of roads to stage juggling performances and a juggler school nearby to train performers. Both need access to employ housing and enough workers to staff them. Jugglers trained at the juggler school will proceed to a nearby booth to put on shows, imparting a modest amount of entertainment to the surrounding area. Cool. Um, so here's entertainment. We need a juggler school. Right. We do need a juggler school. Don't know if it's undesirable or not. Let's pop the juggler school there. Oh, the roads went all nice, like you know, when you're getting into more sort of prosperity type thing because of the, the roads. Um, so the booth. Now the booth. I think yeah. So it'll go there. You need. See, you can make it go here, but what we would need to do, I think, is it needs to be like this. Yeah. See and. It, and then the booth goes in the corner. So the, the booth sits here and then they can walk around the plaza part of it here. So if we pop one there and one here. And then there's entertainment at both ends of the city. <gasps> we'll keep governing because we saw the house. We saw the ordinary cottages just for a second there. Excellent. You have built the first true city in this unforgiving land. Providing for your citizens corporal and spiritual needs. And have helped the Thanite Confederacy unify the divided land. Ooh, so we've got culture rating look we have prosperity kingdom rating two honorary cottages and a population we're going to keep governing for the moment because we can just take a look at what we've done here um she says and then destroys all look if we have a look here we can see our ordinary cottages and they now have a desire if they're going to upgrade anymore they wish to have pots pottery this is the first goods that they're asking for um yeah but you can see, look, how they've upgraded. Isn't it great? Anyway, there we are. <clears throat> I think we're through the heavy bulk of the tutorials, which is great. Um, and in the next episode, we'll move on to the next city, which I think is the final city in the pre-dynastic period. Um, and I'm also going to turn off the music. I think we've experienced the music, but I... I, I do prefer to play without music and I think the music in this game can be quite distracting at times. <laughs> so we're going to get into the Atmos and listen to all the sounds of the city because I've always enjoyed the sounds of, of Pharaoh. So we'll be doing that as well. Um, so there we are. It's all done. It's time for us to move on. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you to all my Patreons for their continued support.